Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and hello guys. So we are back with this another lecture on topic 4.5 and this is gonna be the last ever lecture for the semester. So let the fun part begin. Okay, as you all know, 4.5 method you will have three subtopic 4.5.1 until 4.5.3. Okay, right. So last time we have covered 4.1 and 4.2. So this time we're gonna look on the subtopic 4.5.3. But before that, we're gonna do some recap first. Okay. As you all know, you have learned there are two types of method. The one is predefined, standard library method, and the other one is user defined, where it is defined by the programmer. Okay, so this is uh, other than met.pow and met.sqrt, there are a lot of other examples or other standard library method that we have used throughout the semester. So, such as max, mean, met.max, met.mean, system.out.print. Next in, next flow, next char art, next double, next boolean, next line. Okay, all of this, if you notice, it's all from the input statement, the input method. Okay, input statement. Okay, next. So today, stop talking about predefined. We're gonna talk on more on user defined method, where a method that is defined by the programmer and which is a flah diri kita sendiri. Okay, all right. So let's begin our new subtopic which is user defined method and specifically for this syllabus kita akan cover on static okay So at the end of this topic you will be able to first able to explain there are two types of static user defined method and next one able to explain the general structure of static user defined method which consists of method header and method body Okay, before that, we're going to look on what does it mean by static and non-static. Apa maksud static dengan non-static ni kan sebelum kita nak masuk lebih dalam dengan static. Okay, so static is a method where we can call without instance or object of the class. Okay, ingat ayat ni. Without instance or object of the class. While on the other side, non-static, it means that this method need a class object to call a non-static method. Okay. Static method ni beza dia, yang ini perlu, yang ini tidak perlukan object class, non-static perlukan object class. Apa yang dimaksudkan dengan object class, so kita tengok example of the code. Okay, so both of the code ni lebih kurang sama tapi cuba kita tengok betul-betul. For static method, okay there is a main method here, okay so we have this one method that we that we create method define method definition that we create outside of the main method okay and then we we name the method get sum with the argument int a int b so apa method ni buat okay dia akan dapatkan dua argument a dengan b then dia akan kira result pertambahan di antara dua itulah a dengan b okay kemudian dalam main method tu okay in the main method we just create one variable integer here results okay kita letak value hasil tambahan di antara variable 2 dan 3 which is 5 lah dia akan letak dalam variable 5 eh variable rest and then we gonna print out rest okay notice here the one that I point here okay there's nothing it's just only the name of the method okay while on the left hand on the right hand side here okay the method is just still the same Okay, di mana kita masih lagi buat cara yang sama. Okay, pasal tak apa beza dia, dia tak ada perkataan static. There is no static word to begin with. Okay, then yang this one, dia ada perkataan static. But this one, tak ada perkataan static. There is no static word. But the process is similar. Okay, still returning result of the two uh, variable, two arguments A and B. Okay, but look here in the main method. Apa dia buat? Ha, nampak tak? Dekat bahagian nama method tu, kan? Tadi kan get sum ni, tak ada apa-apa kan? Boleh terus panggil. But this one, you have to create the object of the class. Okay, class kita sekarang ni adalah example 1. So, kita buat class kita example 1, okay, nama objek tu adalah x equals to new example 1. Do you notice that this is quite similar with, with the one we did with scanner sc equals to new scanner? Ha, dia lebih kurang lah tu. 
So kita create object for the class which is example 1 here. Okay, kita nambahkan dia x. So x dot get sum. Okay, so that is actually the main difference between static and non-static. Both of them have pros and cons but we're not going to talk about that because we're going to cover more on static since the syllabus we're going to talk about is static. Okay, cukup sekadar you tahu secara general apa beza static dengan non-static. Okay, so static user defined method there are two types. Two types. Okay, so the first one is a value returning method. What does it mean by value returning? It means that return a value to the caller by doing method call in the math method. Okay, perasan kat sini, dia ada static, lepas tu ada data type kat sini. Ha, data type tu maksudnya apa value yang kita nak returnkan balik. Return ni maksudnya return value returning method, there will be a return statement at the end. Ha, before kita habiskan kita punya um, method ni kan, kita ada ni perkataan return ni, okay, apa value yang kita nak return. Okay, value tu adalah dalam bentuk data, uh, data, dalam bentuk data type double. So macam biasa lah data type you all ingat kan, ada int, ada boolean, ada apa ni, ada float, semua tu lah. Okay. Next one is void method. It means that there's no written value. So the method essentially do not return a value but instead it prints out the value as a message. Okay. So compare dua code. Okay. Sebelah sebelah. Okay. Tadi tu ada data type. Return type lah kita panggil lah. Data type. Okay. Return type dia. Dan sebelah ni void. Okay, void it means that no, no return at all. So if you notice, dekat dalam dia punya method body ni pun tak ada perkataan return. Okay, dekat sini ada perkataan return. This one tak ada. Okay, so remember two types of static user defined method. There are value returning method and void method. Okay, and then we're going to look on general structure of method definition lah. Okay. When we want to define a method, apa yang kita perlu ada, apa yang kita perlu buat. Okay, so in order to define a method, we need to have first the method header, kepala kepada method tersebut. So the method header consists of modifier, a written type, written value type, okay, method name, the name of the method, and then the parameter list, or we call it arguments. Tadi saya sebut argument kan? There's another word for it called parameters lah, parameters list. <coughs> then parameter list ni can be more than one, okay. Apa maksud more than one ni? Nanti kita tengok example selepas ni. Okay. And then we also have a method body. Method body, it means that whatever inside the method after curly bracket here. So, apa-apa yang berlaku selepas curly bracket. Okay. Dan sebelum penutup curly bracket ni, itu semua dikira sebagai method body. That is where all the operations, well the process semua berlaku lah. Okay. Pengiraan, whatever. Alright. So this one, we have this one example here. So, tengok kat sini, kat, di mana method header? Where is the method header for this example? Yes, the one that is above. So that is what we call it method header. So static, this is modifier. Void is the written type. Display sum is the method name. Int A, int B is the parameter list or we call it argument. How many arguments inside this method? Two arguments. How many parameters inside this, method, inside this method? Two parameters. Okay. Berapa banyak maximum parameters yang kita boleh letak? Banyak. Okay. I don't even have the answer for that. Tapi memang banyak lah. <laughs> okay. You can put as many as you want. Okay. So, kalau dekat sini kita perasan dia void kan? Bila void, tak ada perkataan written. There is no written statement. We just print out the message of the result. Okay. So, mana part yang method body? Ha, di bawah dia. Selepas curly bracket pembuka ni, sebelum curly bracket penutup ni, whatever happens inside here, this is what we call method body. Okay. So, tadi dah tengok two, uh, two types of static user defined method. Okay. Kita dah tengok general structure of the method definition. So, kita tengok kat sini. Secara am ni tadi kita dah belajar ada dua type kan. Bila ada dua types of method ni, kita boleh gabung dia jadi empat variety. So, end up kita akan produce four types of method. So, 
The first one is the value return method with arguments. Apa maksud dia? Ya, kita tengok contoh kat sini. Perkataan static ni wajib lah. Kena letak. Okay. With arguments. Maksudnya value returning kan? Pertama dia value returning. Value returning ni maksudnya ada return type. So return type kita kat sini double. Nama method kita cut sales. With arguments, so it means there is a value dalam kita punya bracket. Ingat eh, dalam bracket ni, template dia adalah data type kemudian variable. Apa variable yang you nak pakai? Data type, variable. Data type, variable. Okay. Okay, so dekat sini, since it's value return ni, so that is why ada return statement. Okay, simple je uh, method ni di mana kita declare satu variable total. Okay, dan total ni dia akan ambil A jumlah A tambah B. A dah pun B ni datang daripada mana? Datang daripada parameter. Okay, the arguments lah A dengan B. Kemudian dia kira total kali dengan 0.0. Maksudnya kali dengan 600 lah. Okay. Next, kita tengok contoh value returning method without arguments. So, apa beza dia? Okay, beza dia di dalam bracket ni tak ada apa-apa. So, that is what we call it without arguments. Tapi still, value return method sebab dekat sini nampak tu return type kita letak double. So, kita kena ada statement, return statement. Okay. So, dekat sini ada buat apa ni? Declare dua ring, uh, dua number, num1, num2, 8.9, 9.8. Okay. And then, we declare another variable to result where it calculate the sum of both of this number. And then, we return back the result. That's all. Okay. So, Next one is void method. So, void method with argument. Macam mana pula? So, void method, dia punya data type, dia punya return type ni jadi void. Ha, dia, dia tak pakai mana-mana data type dah, dia pakai void. And then the name is display sum with arguments. Ha, so, tengok dalam ni ada something kan, ada argument. Berapa banyak argument? Ada dua, A dengan B. Pun sama juga, okay, method body dia sama saja. Yang saya nak tekankan, nak highlight kan adalah perbezaan di atas ni. Okay, dia punya method header dia. What about void method with the arguments? So, void method with the arguments, first thing, return type dia void. And then, dalam bracket selepas method name dia pun kosong. Okay, so what we do? Just create a simple in a result variable which consists of 10 plus 20 will be 30. So, then we print out the result. Okay. Lupa nak mention tadi, untuk void, kita tak ada written statement. Kita, instead, kita guna output message. Eh, output message pula. Output statement. Ha, kita buat message untuk just display the punya value. Okay. Ha, Sepun so samalah macam ni juga. Kita guna system.out.println dan kita print out kan the value. So, basically, that is it. The difference between four types of method with two types of static user defined method. Faham eh? Okay, so ini tadi kita tengok dua-dua ada double, okay, satu ada argument, satu tak ada argument dan dua-dua kena return. Okay, return data tak lah, return value. Okay, next void method. Okay, dua-dua pakai void, satu ada argument, satu tak ada argument dan dua-dua pakai output statement. Itu sahaja untuk cover uh, secara general method ni macam mana. Okay, so. Sebelum saya nak buy thank you ni kan. Okay, kita nak recap sikit. Sikit bukan recap lah. Kita macam summarizekan balik kan kenapa method ni. So why we use method? Okay. The reason we use method ni. Kenapa method ni wujud adalah supaya kita nak jadikan kod kita lebih efficient. Okay. Kod kita lebih ringkas. Apa maksud ringkas ni? Bukanlah berapa banyak jumlah line of code. Tapi kita nak tengok berapa panjang kita punya main method. Sebab at the end of the day, code kita ni, okay, uh, computer hanya akan run whatever inside the main method. Okay, the main method is all the where, all the codes that will be invoked. Invoke ni maksudnya yang akan dibuat oleh computer. So, lagi, orang kata lagi pendek you punya main method, tak kira lah di luar tu main, main, apa method-method you yang lain panjang macam mana pun, tapi kalau you punya main method you, Dapat diringkaskan, lagi efisien lah you punya code. Okay. So, the reason why we have this method adalah supaya kita tak bebankan kita punya main method ni dengan banyak unnecessary stuff. So, maksudnya kan, let's say lah saya nak get sum antara, uh, apa ni, saya nak buat get sum ni tiga kali antara no, ada antara enam nombor yang berbeza-beza. 
So instead of saya kena declare a noun variable dalam main method dan buat manually, saya hanya boleh panggil method get sum tiga kali je. Okay, jimat kat situ. So yes, that's it. That's all for the topic 4.5.3. Okay, kita dah cover semua dah. So apa yang tinggal, you buat the remaining, you do the coding, practice. Okay, a lot of practice, insyaAllah you boleh buat. So, that's all for our class today. Thank you very much everyone and have a good day. Bye-bye.